Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I know I'm like three days late, but today we're going to be going through my June favorites and flops, my top pick products of the month of June, and some products that didn't exactly work out for me. Usually I put this up the last video of June, but I'm a little behind. Sorry about it. When this video goes up, it's going to be July 2nd, so I'm only a few days off. Anyway, if you want to see some of my top picks for the month of June, as well as the products that definitely missed the mark, make sure to keep on watching. And please don't forget to subscribe because I upload three times a week. And that's going to be the best way to stay up to date on all the fun stuff I'm posting. So if you want to see my top picks and biggest fails for June, stay tuned. I am filming like three videos today and I have way too many products in front of me, so bear with me. First item is going to be ride or die favorite that I have spoken about for years. And when I moved to Florida, I didn't have any and I've been down here for seven months and I finally repurchased it. It is the Cinema Secrets Makeup Brush Cleanser. It smells like coconut and vanilla. You literally put a little bit of this in a little bowl. You dip your brush in it and you swirl it on a paper towel and it is instantly clean, sanitized, and dry. I want to say that this is probably the seventh, maybe eighth bottle I have picked up over the course of the years. I'm obsessed with it. I've been using my uh, Beauty Blender Charcoal Brush Cleaner, which is nice for like shampooing brushes, but it's a little bit harsh and I like to clean my brushes every week because I go in with interesting colors or I test things. And if I hate a product and that product is now like stuck in my brush, I want to clean that brush and get the shit out of my brush. So I clean my brushes and I find that I uh, over clean my brushes a little bit. So the Cinema Secrets is instant drying and super gentle plus there's conditioning agents in it. Uh, I do say this and I will try to be better about it but I will be linking all the items I talk about down below. So if I hold it up really quickly and you're like trying to take notes or write down what I'm talking about, check the description box down below. I will list and link every item I talk about today. Next up is an item that, again, I've had in my collection for a very long time, but I've only recently rediscovered it. This is the Invincible Setting Powder from Supergoop. It is a translucent setting powder that is travel friendly, that is infused with an SPF 45. So if you're on the go with your makeup, if you look on the bo bottom box, whatever, of every single SPF product you have, they all pretty much say reapply every two hours or so. But when you're wearing a full face of makeup, that's not very easy to do. So taking something like this where I can just lightly powder over my face, add a little bit more SPF, and touch up my makeup all in one, definitely going to be a win. I know they have a few colors of this. I have the translucent one, so this has no color. But if you're looking for something to like actually touch up or something with a little bit of pigment to it, they do have those options as well. Next is the item I probably was the most excited for. It got a dedicated review video, which I will link up here. I'll end some other favorites in there too. But it is the Lunar Beauty Moon Prism Blush Palette. This, I was prepared not to love. Because when I saw the pictures online, I was like, okay, I'll use like four of them. That'll be too light. That'll be too dark. It is not too light. This is not too dark. It looks like it's too light in the pan, but once you pick up the product, it actually goes on quite nicely to give yourself like a soft, ethereal blush tone. And then the darker one is actually what I'm wearing today. I will add a tiny bit more so you guys can see how it goes on. But I take a tiny bit. I pat it on the cheek. And I think it's just such a stunning color. I'm going to even myself out. But this has been like the only blush I consistently am grabbing for. And of course now I've put on like three layers of blush. So I'm wearing a little bit more than I probably should. But I don't even care because it just looks so pretty. Um, I will, as always, link it. But I believe this is sold out. But I did see on either Manny MUA's Instagram or the Lunar Beauty Instagram that a restock is coming. And as soon as it's available, it'll be available. But it's sold out in like one day on Sephora, um, Lunar Beauty's website, and Morphe. So... It is so worth it. Another product that did get a dedicated video is the Foreo UFO 2. It is a whole mask system. I'm not going to like demo it now. First off, makeup. Second off, dedicated video, which I'll link right up there. But they are these individual treatment masks that you pop the little pod right into your device. And it syncs to an app on your phone and it talks to you and plays some music while you do it. And it is a 90 second intensive mask treatment. 
So instead of waiting 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever, for a mask to dry or a sheet mask, you get all of the benefits in 90 seconds. Plus, it heats and cools and uses eight different types of light therapy. So in addition to all of those other cool things, it tingles and vibrates and warms, and it's just, it is an experience. It's a little bit pricey, I know, but like totally a product that is worth it if you think about it because the masks, these came in a box of seven for $9. So for a dollar and change, yes, you're gonna spend 200 something on the device, but the masks are gonna be a lot cheaper than stocking up on Glam Glow masks or Peter Thomas Roth masks that are 50, 60, $70 a container. Uh, next item came out of my BoxyCharm box for the month. It is the Too Faced Coco Contour Kit. Now I have mixed reviews on this as a whole. So I do mix the light and the medium colors, because I'm not exactly medium, but I'm not exactly light. And I really like the way they go on. I like the way it smells. I think the packaging is cute. All in all, it is a win for me. However, the deep contour is way too light for like 90% of the deep people in the world. So as far as like inclusivity and actually having a decent shade range, like this is the lighter end of deep. I like to use Fenty as an example, because they go from 100 to 500, and those are their shades. I feel like this contour color I could use on Brandon and he's like a 350 in Fenty. So if you're darker than a 350 or a 400, you won't be able to use this. So from an inclusivity standpoint, miss the mark, but formula standpoint, and if it came in your box and you're of a fairer complexion, you will enjoy this. That was the most like mixed bittersweet review I think I've ever done. It's good, but it's not good. Uh, the next item is from Pixie by Petra. It is the Skin Treats Makeup Fixing Mist. I got this at the beginning of the month and I'm already down to here, which doesn't sound like a lot, but the fact that we're on quarantine and I wear makeup one day a week definitely means something. My favorite way to use it is I will mist it over my sponge and then I will just throughout the day lightly pat and it just kind of brings everything back to life. You can mist it right onto the skin. I just prefer it this way because I find I have a little bit more control and it picks up oil, it cleans the skin and it keeps the skin and the makeup underneath looking beautiful. And it's pixie, so it's fairly affordable. I know, I talk about bougie products. I know that. I'm getting better, affordable, win. So I have my next two items are hits and then I have a few misses, but I'm gonna talk about the next three items together. Two are hits, one's a miss, but they're all from the same brand. So the first hit is going to be the Brow Bar by Rima Sugar Daddy Iconic Face Kit. So I did a dedicated video on this as well because this product will be coming in BoxyCharm Premium in July. So BoxyCharm Premium spoiler, this is coming in a box. It is not this color, it is a different palette, but from a formula standpoint, the formula is identical. The only thing different are two of the eyeshadow colors, or I guess all four of the eyeshadow colors. There's a purple in there too, but there's like a gold and a green. I'll pop a picture up right here. I love this formula. I've been using this palette. Today is I think the first day I've done my makeup in a minute where I didn't use this for something. Actually, no, I lied. I used this highlight today. So I did actually use this, but I find myself gravitating towards this. It lives right here on my vanity now, front and center so that I can grab it just because the colors are so universal that I can take the bronzer tone up here and use it as a transition color. I can use either of these as eyeshadow or lid shades, the translucent powder. But when I have those moments where I'm like, all right, my under eyes need a little love, a little translucent powder. The white is not a white shade. It is just a translucent, but there's just enough pigment in there that I find it does a nice little bit of brightening and helps to kind of pull everything together. Amazing formula. The second item from this brand, which is also a win, is the Brow Bar by Rima Dark Brow Kit. So this is an all-in-one brow kit that comes with a highlight shade, a like waxy pomade and two powders, as well as a brush, a tweezer, and a little brow pencil. I don't use like waxes or pomade, so I have not even used that, but I did use the highlight shade for my brow bone and I did use the powders today. I've been playing with the powders for about two weeks now. And I did also use the pencil today because I find it's just a little bit easier to get a shape with. And I love how like soft the brows look today. They don't look crunchy, they don't look overdone, but they're nice and gentle. I take the lighter of the two shades, 
towards the head of the brow. I take a tiny bit of the black, like next to nothing, and I will take that just through the tail to give myself a little bit more dimension. I don't like using mini brushes, so I do use a full-size brush. This is the Beauty For Real brow brush, but I take a tiny bit. I'm gonna take a little bit more black just to show you guys how I use it. Barely tap in, and I'll just take a tiny bit and feather it through the very tail and just comb through it just to lightly darken that up a little bit more, just to give myself that dimension to the brow. If you're looking for like a one and done brow product that gives you a little bit of everything, you don't have to worry, you get the pencil, the powders, the pomade, the highlight, all in one, colors that match and work well together. Again, this is the shade Dark, and I'm wearing it today. And now we're moving on to my flops for the month. I have three products, and the first is a Brow Bar by Rima product. This is the Dark Brown microblade pen. So it's one of those like three pronged brow that I'm just gonna gives you like a brow color. If you go in with a light hand, you can get like those brow strokes to the hairs. In theory, I like products like these, but in actuality, every time I've gone in to use it, I maybe it's a control thing, maybe I need to play with it more, but I find that every time I use this product, my brow hairs go higher and my brow just gets thicker and thicker and thicker. And then, secondary issue, I find that it, it, the pigmentation, because I like to then comb through my brows, it doesn't quite dry down enough that when I go in with my spoolie, it doesn't like move it around and smudge it. So I end up losing the whole purpose of using a pen like this. So I don't wanna say it is a bad product, but I definitely like it more than the Urban Decay Brow Blade product, but I just, I think this solidified for me that I don't love pen brow microblady products. And the next two flops come out of this month's base boxy charm box. The first is the Fill Up Orange Touch and Soul palette. I used this in the tutorial, and I think my issue with this, and I did, I think I mentioned in that video, Touch and Soul, Touch and Soul is a K Beauty brand, so a lot of their products are meant to be a wash of color, a little bit of pigment, something soft and subtle. So if you don't really, if you're intimidated by color, these oranges will be great for you because no need to be intimidated. It's a super light wash of pigment, not intimidating at all. But this came in BoxyCharm, which is an American and Canadian, but an American Miami-based box. K-Beauty, I get it. I understand it. But putting a product like this in that kind of a box is not doing exactly what I want out of the box. That being said, I can understand that this is a product that would be great for certain people. If you're either just getting into makeup and you're just getting into color and you want to play around with color in a way that you know is not super like threatening, this will work for you. Personally, I like to go in with a light hand on a very pigmented shadow and control that myself. I built this up and built this up and built this up and nothing. And the last item for me that is a flop is the Laura Geller Multitasking Eye, Lip, and Cheek Palette, also out of that same BoxyCharm box. For what it's worth, I did also get a really good mascara out of that box that I've really been enjoying, but this palette just wasn't for me. I felt that I had to keep building it up, and I really didn't get a lot of color payoff out of it. That being said, if you're really into super minimalistic makeup, I think you might like this. But for someone like me who like, I mean, clearly, I'm, I'm not even hiding that I'm wearing makeup. If you're looking for like a natural, sun-kissed, am I wearing makeup or am I not? I think this is gonna be really good for you. But with my creams, I like going in for more of like a cream with pigment. Like this Beauty For Real blush is so much more pigmented. I get such better color payoff and it even blends out a little bit easier as well. So all in all, it is a better product. So it came in a box. I'm probably going to continue to play with it and try to make it work. Or maybe I'll do like a no makeup makeup routine with this to try and like see how it looks when I'm trying to have it be super subtle. But for me and my normal aesthetic, which is lashes and a smoky eye and some intense complexion, just not enough for me. And because I always hate ending on a negative note and talking about a flop last, my last favorite for the month is going to be the InStylish Heart of the Ocean sponge. I did a whole dedicated video to this the other day, but I've been playing with it for now like two weeks. The video was a little late. I love this sponge. So in that video, I was it said that like this is the side you're supposed to use with concealer, and I said it was a little like flimsy. 
I flipped it over like this because I wasn't thinking, and this round side fits right under the eye so perfectly that I got the perfect under eye blend when I started using the corner of the sponge. So overall, I thought it was going to be a mess sponge. I liked it, but I didn't love it. Everything but cream products this will work for. Liquids and, well, cream fluid like this works, but using it on like a cream contour or cream blush, I didn't love it as much because it's a little porous and I felt like I was dragging. For that, I'll typically go into something that's more of like a denser brush. But for your foundation, your concealer, and it, like I've even used this with powder, and it is just so beautiful. And as you guys saw, this with my Pixi as like a touch-up, beautiful. Another amazing product that I will link down below. All right, that is it. Thank you guys so much for being patient. I know this video came a little bit late, but my June favorites and flops for the month, here they are. As always, let me know down below some of your favorites and flops because I do love hearing what you guys are loving because that's how I decide what I want to test for the following month. Like, I just got a delivery of a bunch of Il Maquillage product because one of you was like, you need to try Il Maquillage, you're going to love it. I have, I think, eight products we're going to be trying out in an upcoming video. So look out for that. It's going to be first impressions because I haven't used any of them yet and I'm really excited. So let me know if you're excited for that video as well and I will see you guys next time. Bye!